Today, we'll be looking at the Beta FPV Cetus Pro Kit and my thoughts owning it as a beginner. The Beta FPV Cetus Pro is the second brother of the Cetus series. The size is between the Cetus Lite and the Cetus X. Unlike the Cetus X that has an adjustable camera tilt, the Cetus Pro has this camera built in with the 30, angle, uh, 30 degree camera angles. The quad is also coming with four sets of 18,000 kV motors that can be powered on by one VT 2.0 batteries. The weight include the battery should be around 46 grams. So this is still way under the 250 gram registration limit. The flight time with this 400 milliamp battery should get you around three minutes. You will also get an optical flow sensor that is built in on the back that will automatically detect the ground level and keep the height for you when you're flying in normal mode. But this is only available in normal mode. Do take advantage when you're completely new to get to know the controls. Uh, currently, the only protocol available is FR Sky, and there is no ELRS yet. You will have the option to get the drone itself or the entire kit like this, with the controller and uh, uh, controller and goggles. The Beta FPV Light Radio 2 SE has a CC25000 protocol built in, which means it supports these protocols. The most important protocol for us will be the FR Sky D16 and the FR Sky D8 as these are the major fry sky receivers uh, used on tiny loops. For this being said, you will be able to reuse this controller to bind with other FR sky quads. The goggle that came with this kit is just a basic analog box goggle that does not have a DVR built in, which means you won't be able to record videos on this thing. And it is also a little bit small enough that it won't fit anybody that wears glasses like me. But if you don't wear glasses, it will fit you just fine. You also can use this to generally buy with any analog quads. I will do a separate video to demonstrate how to switch mode on this radio and how to buy your other FR Sky quads on this too. All right, let's go and do some indoor and outdoor flying. The indoor footage is recorded directly to my DJI goggles. With the analog module, you will have three modes to choose from, which is gonna be the normal, sport, and acro, which is manual mode. You will also have the option to choose the speed from slow, normal, and fast. The speed dial is mainly to control how sensitive your controlling sticks will be. Okay, so let's switch to manual and take off. Okay, so we're just going to go in circles around some obstacles I built in my tiny garage. If you haven't tried it, I would strongly suggest you to try out flying indoors with tiny hoops. It's a lot of fun. Yes, much harder, but as you kind of get limited in certain space, your flying skill will increase surprisingly fast. You can see that this little thing is very powerful with its 18,000 kV motors, but not overpowered to make indoor flying unachievable. Still very nicely tuned out of the box and boop, I just crashed. Alright, so turtle mode, turtle mode. And flip it over. Let's continue the flying. And do remember to keep your distance with any walls as the prop guards tend to create suction when getting too close. Well, that's about for indoor flying. Let's get outside and try it outside. Okay, we're outside right now. And you can clearly see I picked the worst day of doing this review as it is pretty windy and the drone is shaking like pretty bad. So when flying outdoors, strongly recommend it to fly manual mode as you do need the extra tilting angle to fight the potential wind. You can now see the drone is kind of struggling to keep up with the speed. It is obviously much slower compared to the Cetus X, but hey, this is a 1S drone, like, like there's no complaints. You will need to punch a lot of throttle and tilt more forward to make it go fast. And my throttle is always around 70 to 80%, which is basically almost at the top. And due to the camera angle, you will be looking down a little bit more and trade for the speed, which is a little bit weird for me, but hey, I'm not complaining. I think this drone is performing very, very well already. Let's head back in and talk about the pros and cons. Hey, let's look at the pros first. I would say this is a wonderful indoor flyer with a durable frame that can take a lot of beating. With the camera sort of built into the frame, the frame is now even stronger and it has less joint that will potentially crack like the camera had from the Cetus X. You can really do some serious indoor flying with this thing. Also, same as the Cetus X, 
The Cetus Pro is built on screws and plugs. If you unfortunately damage something, mostly the frame or motors, it is unlikely you will need to know how to solder in order to fix it. You could just go and on Amazon and Beta FPV to get the replacement frame and motors and just migrate everything over. Lastly, I do really appreciate the beginner feature such as the optical flow and the remote sensitivity speed dial, which is the slow, medium, and fast. You get to practice on your own pace to get comfortable on each step until you advance to the next. Hey, good job, Beta FPV. All right, let's look at the cons. As everything will always have a good and a bad side, the stronger the frame, thus means heavier weight. We can compare it with the Beta FPV Meteor 75 frame, but since I don't have one, I can only show you a 65 frame. The only difference between the 65 and the 75 is just the 65 is smaller, but they're similarly constructed, like that. As you can see right away, there's a significant difference in the material used. The Meteor 65 is much lighter, but much easier to bend and much softer compared to the Cetus Pro. So it mainly depends on your purpose to use the drone for. Do you want it to be more agile or do you want it to take more damage? Well, as a beginner, I choose more damage. Lastly, this is more like a personal complaint. The setup only comes with FR Sky, and I wish there's an ELRS option for this quad, as it seems like the whole FPP hobby is moving toward the ELRS trend. With the ERS built in, you will get a better penetration when flying through obstacles and much better RX range, but since mostly indoor, it's not too important. The main reason why I have to get the entire kit to review it is because I don't have a FR Sky or a 4 in 1 system setup, so I needed the radio to test it out. If I can purchase the quad with the ELRS, then it's a lot easier. Alright, so this wraps us up the review today. I hope you found something useful out of it. If you think I earned it, please help me like, subscribe to my channel. Your support means a lot to me. Thank you and bye for now.